Hi, this is Aaron, and today we're going to compare Windows Phone 7 with iOS. And Windows Phone 7 is in its infancy, but right now for a first release it's quite good. So let's first talk about the design. Let's first uh, <clears throat> talk about the phone design actually. And the phone, obviously you've got pretty much one choice, or really four choices if you go back all the way to the first for the iPhone. And with Windows Phone 7 you have three different devices on AT&T and one on T-Mobile right now and many coming in the future. And Microsoft has set specifications for each phone. So uh, to give a comparison, this phone or all Windows Phone 7 phones must have a 1 gigahertz processor, a 5 megapixel camera with flash, an external button for the camera, and uh, these buttons, home, search, and back. There are some other specs as well, 8 gigabytes of memory or more, and most of those, or pretty much all of those, are not swappable. The iPhone, we all know right now, the iOS or iPhone 4 has a 1 gigahertz processor, or what's suspected to be a 1 gigahertz with the Apple A4 processor. So let's go ahead and turn this on here. And we'll wait that for that to boot. I'm not going to do a speed test. They're both booted, or this is booted already. I've been using it. I only have a SIM card in my iPhone. I kind of swap back and forth lately. These phones do have a removable battery, which is nice, and all use micro USB, which is, is really nice. They both uh, have their own music systems or services. You have iTunes for iPhone, and you have Zune Player for Windows Phone 7. Once this comes up, what we're going to show is, yeah, we'll close that. I know I have no SIM card. The organization of the OS itself. So let's go ahead and turn that off and turn this off. There we go. Both have sleep-wake buttons on top. We'll wake them up at the same time. And to unlock the iPhone, you slide. To unlock Windows Phone 7, you slide up. Now, first of all, organization-wise, on the Windows Phone 7 OS, kind of a long name, but they eventually got it right with iPhone. It used to be iPhone OS, now it's iOS because of multiple devices. So what you have here is your, your original uh, lock screen here. And this is just a one of the default uh, wallpapers that I picked. It's Christmassy, whatever. So uh, we have battery, Wi-Fi connection, and your mail. If you have a text or anything, it's right here on this on this lock screen. is It's really nice. You don't get any of that information on iOS, and that's unfortunate. And hopefully they change that in the future. It's really nice to be able to turn this on. Yep, I have a message. No, I don't. And unlock it. So we slide up to unlock in really responsive and fast. Now, Windows Phone 7 is arranged in tiles, and these tiles can be anything from email to Zune to different applications to Xbox Live, Netflix, whatever you want. You tap, you hold, you move it to where you want, tap to lock it in. If you want to move it back, tap and hold, do the same. Really simple, that's, that's the whole organization of Windows Phone 7. These tiles are updated live. These are people on Facebook that are commenting and things. Uh, we have pictures that are live. They're pulled all from different services and feeds. And that's pretty much it. If we want to access other apps, we swipe to the side. And here's all of the apps listed alphabetically. If I want to move those apps over, I can tap and hold. And I've got the options to uninstall, pin to start, or rate and review. Now with iOS, you're probably familiar, but let's go over it just in case you're not. Here we basically have all of our apps encapsulated on one page. If we want more apps, we go to the next page, and so on and so forth. We can now put them in folders by tapping and holding and dragging into the folders. But that's pretty much it, and they are not live. Very simple, very well organized, but that's all you get. No live tiles. Um, it's a little bit different concept because of the organization, and so let's talk about that a little bit. The concept with Windows Phone 7 is, by their commercials, you get in and get out and back to real life. Uh, 
And what that means is, for Facebook, you don't necessarily have to go to a Facebook app with I, or, uh, Windows Phone 7. What you do is you go into your People Hub, and here are all of your feeds on what people are doing. And when you want to see what they're doing, you look, and there's me. Uh, what video to do next? Well, I'm doing this video, and you can see it's updated. I can scroll to the side. This is the Metro UI. There's pictures of people. And that's pretty much it. We tap the Windows button to go back. Um, unfortunately, on iOS, uh, it's a kind of separated into apps. I kind of like the concept with Windows Phone 7 that it's all right in one spot. When you set up the phone initially, you go into the People Hub, or rather you configure your account with Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want. It goes right in the People Hub. And that's how you access it. When you want to update it, you go into the Me Hub. And you can go into the Me Hub. Here's all of my stuff. Tap, and I can update, share, hit the button there. I'm done. I can share with Windows Live, Facebook, or whatever other accounts I may have set up. Now, I did go over this on some of the overall interface on another video. Uh, but let's talk about um, the differences in the way the music works on here. Now, like I said, each Apple, each phone has their own music player. And this is Zune, so we'll go into Zune. Now, the nice thing with Zune is the artist and the music and the, the different artist pictures and things are all right here. Uh, whatever you've been painting, or I'm sorry, watching most. I don't know where that came from. But whatever you've been watching most. Um, and it kind of keeps an updated thing. So I listen to Twit uh, for a podcast, YouTube, RDO, AT&T, just checking out different apps. Um, this is updated live. If I want to search the marketplace, I tap search. I can search for any artist. Um, I don't know. How about uh, Michael Jackson, I guess. And what you'll see is... With a Zoom Pass, you can access this via the internet and stream it at any time. So let's go into Artist for Michael Jackson. You can see it throws on his picture in the background. Here's all the different albums. And at the top, we can have albums, uh, albums, songs, bio, and that's pretty much it. So really nice but what we can do is uh, I guess we'll go into the 25th anniversary thriller album we can play this right here or if I tap and hold the album I can add to the now playing buy download or share so the difference between buy and here let me bring this in here the difference between buy and download is when you buy the album you're actually purchasing it when you're downloading it you can listen to it as long as you have a Zune subscription and that's how that works. That's $15 a month. You get to keep 10 songs a month. So basically you're buying an album for, or buying 10 songs a month and you rent for $5. Now on iPod, we kind of know how that works. You sync with your iTunes account. Here's all of your artists. You have cover flow when you turn it sideways and really simple, really nice layout, but just a different take. There is no subscription model. You purchase all your music. Not a bad thing, but a different model. And uh, you can't just grab it on the go, and that's what you use apps like RDO and uh, Pandora, that sort of thing for. Now, let's go into applications. Applications on Windows Phone 7 are very similar to what you get on iOS. The iOS applications, you go into your iTunes account, you download the application, and here they are. You go into them, and here's my application, Zolotech. It opens, you're good to go. There's the app. They can be different looking. The applications on Windows Phone 7 are very similar looking. And by that I mean, let's go into, well, let's go into the eBay app. And I just got an email on, on uh, iOS, and we'll talk about email here in a moment. Here is eBay. Oh, I'm going to accept the terms of use. Apparently I haven't been in it, or they updated something. Sure, we'll turn notifications on. So here's eBay, and you can see it's got that tile look. We can swipe side to side and search. And when we search, we can scroll up and down if there's different products. Very similar to what the Metro UI, or what that's called on Windows Phone 7. On, uh, on iOS, 
all of the UIs can be completely different. Now, that's not a bad thing. It's really more of a preference, but Windows Phone 7, strangely enough, is keeping it more simple than Apple. And um, for getting in and out of your phone, that's really a better thing, I think. For someone that wants a full, rich multimedia experience, you're going to want to go with iOS. But anyway, let's go on. So let's talk a little bit about email. Um, and, well, actually, before we go into that, let me show you the marketplace for the apps. Now, there's about two to 3,000 apps currently on Windows Phone 7, while we all know there's hundreds of thousands of apps on iOS. And most of the apps you want are already available on Windows Phone 7. However, not all of them. No Pandora just recently announced. Uh, hopefully there's one down the road, but I'm not sure what the deal is with that. But we can search the marketplace for, say, Twitter. There we go. So we have Twitter. And what this does is this doesn't just search your your marketplace for uh, applications. It searches the marketplace for songs as well. So here you can see there's a Twitter application. There's a couple different different ones and we can download those. The experience to download those is similar to iOS but it bills your account directly from your phone so your AT&T bill will go up or your T-Mobile bill and I already have downloaded this but you get your screenshots and reviews. So let's go into email. Email currently on iOS is grouped into one giant email box if you want it that way. I have five email addresses grouped into one and there are all my different email addresses grouped into one inbox that I can easily view at once. On iOS, you have separate email boxes that you can set up different preferences for when you want them to check email, which you can do on iOS as well. And very simple UI, you scroll, we can go to unread, flagged, urgent, and all. Now, I have to say the email actually is a little bit faster for me on iOS, or I'm sorry, Windows Phone 7. And because if you want to delete these, you just tap next to here. Check what you want to do with them. Scroll up, here's your options. Complete, clear flag, delete, send to another folder. Really quick, get in, get out. I think it's pretty nice, but you do have to go to these multiple email boxes. And not so much a pain, but when you have a bunch set up, it can be uh, kind of a bother to go in and out. Not too much of a big deal. Let's take a look at the browsers on Windows Phone 7 versus the iPhone. So on Windows Phone 7, it's Internet Explorer. Let's go into that. And we tap in the top just like we do on iOS. And let's type in Windows. Now, I'm not going to show the, the keyboards too much. I did an overview with that. Keyboard is excellent. Let's go to Zolotech.com. There we go. Let's do the same on iOS and both on the same Wi-Fi. So, and let's go ahead and show you. Now, no flash on either device. Let's go ahead and tap both. And let me bring them up to you. Oh, they're still loading on both. There we go. Both done about the same time. And let's do a refresh on both just to kind of show you. There we go. Both about they, they're both very very similar. Um, Safari's loading a little bit faster for some reason on this particular one, and I have some weird formatting going on. But let's show you pinch to zoom. See how fast it is. It's very responsive. Scrolls nice and quick. It formats my site kind of strange. It puts all the text down here. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Uh, iOS Safari formats it perfectly, and not sure what the deal is with that, but I thought I would show you great browsing experience. Honestly, it's very fast for most sites. No problem whatsoever there. Um, the Windows Phone 7 phone also has a uh, input via voice that you can do just like Android, and you can just say... Uh, find directions to Syracuse, New York. And there you go. And it's pretty quick. And works, see directions to Syracuse, New York. It says, gives me some local businesses, gives me map directions. It's really a nice app, and uh, or I'm sorry, nice search feature using Bing. <clears throat> 
let's talk a little bit about multitasking since we have all of these different applications now. No multitasking on Windows Phone 7 at this time. Uh, that's promised in the future, and also no cut and paste. On iOS, we do have multitasking by double hitting or double tapping. Here's our different apps. We can tap and hold to close. And tap again on the home button. And that's that. Now, I do feel like I'm doing a lot more tapping on iOS than I am on Windows Phone 7. Uh, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because you have to go to an app, go back, go, you know, hit home, whatever. It's a couple more taps, not too much of a big deal if you're used to it, but just something I thought I'd point out. Now, the one neat thing about I, or, uh, I'm sorry, I keep getting them backwards. The one neat thing about Windows Phone 7 is Xbox Live. This is Xbox Live from your account on your Xbox. If you have an Xbox, you're going to love this because you have all the games here. They give you achievements, and it's a nice setup that they have on Windows Phone 7. On iOS, you have Game Center, and Game Center uh, tries to be an Xbox Live, and it's free, but tries to be an Xbox Live uh, that's kind of getting there, I think. I don't know of a lot of people that have iPhones and iPods that actually use it regularly as far as the Game Center part of the games go. And we do have it here. There we go, Game Center. And very simple. Not a big deal, but it is there. And most games are now supporting it. You have friends. I really don't have a lot of friends because I don't use it a lot. Two friends, if you want to friend me, uh, Anzolo at me or Big Z243, uh, friend me if you'd like. But that's Xbox first that I think in the future Xbox Live will offer a little bit more as far as interactivity with multiple devices. And for me, I pick that on the Windows Phone 7, but it is lacking in some games. Uh, let's move on to the camera. The camera on both of these is quite good. They're both 5 megapixel cameras in this case. However, uh, the iPhone beats it uh, by a lot in my opinion, especially with video. And that's just currently the way it is. It's not that it's bad, but the, the Windows Phone 7 phone, Texas camera, you just hold this down. And now we're in the camera. You can do that while you pull it out of your pocket, and boom, you're in there without unlocking it and going to an app. It's really kind of nice. You have your features, zoom in and out, switch to video, settings, scenes, effects. It's really a nice camera. And I think as camera technology improves, uh, you'll see them get much better on Windows Phone 7 devices. They're not bad by any means. I'm just saying Wind or iOS has such a good camera on the iPhone 4 that it's tough to beat. Compared to most smartphones, though, this is a great camera, and it's really up to the hardware manufacturers of how good it is, but it has to be a minimum of 5 megapixels. Not a bad thing, uh, but in this case, right now, the camera's simpler and more easy to use on iOS, but nicer to get into on Windows Phone 7 with pull it out of your pocket, hit the button, you're in, take your picture, you're done. It's really nice, and they will auto-upload to Facebook or wherever you choose. And I really like that feature. I think it's really nice. And it connects with Windows SkyDrive as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about battery life. Battery life on Windows Phone 7, I think the battery man management's quite good, and it really depends on the device. Solid 12 hours out of this, 10 to 12 hours, one day out of this. I mean, use it for a day, don't charge it use it during the next day, day and a half, is really what I average on this. I do a lot of multimedia, a lot of, a, a lot of uh, podcasts and audio and streaming of that audio. When you play games, it's going to kill the battery on both devices, but overall I think battery management is quite good on this device, considering it has a fairly small battery. I know that on the Samsung Focus, I hear the battery is much better, but that said, It'll improve as the device improves, or whatever device you choose. I think it's not too big of a deal, and most people will be happy with the battery life they receive. Uh, the phone calls on both is something I thought I'd mention. I went into the dialers on another video, but the phone calls is definitely something worth mentioning since I haven't dropped a single call on the Windows Phone 7 phone. Same network, same SIM card even. I just made a SIM adapter for this one. Same SIM card not dropped a call, same signal strength. Don't know what it is, but there you have it. I don't have a lot of issues with iOS and dropping calls on my iPhone 4, but I have dropped them, haven't dropped one on 
Windows Phone 7, and there's something to be said for that. I know that that's been mentioned on some podcasts I listen to, and I found it to be true. It's very good on Windows Phone 7. Lastly, let's talk about the future of both OSs. iOS, rock solid for now. Apple's behind it, updates it regularly, we already know that. I can't imagine Windows not or Microsoft not doing the same thing with Windows Phone 7. They've already said that early this next year in 2011, we're going sorry, we're going to have uh, um, many updates for Windows Phone 7. We're going to have cut and paste. We're going to have multitasking. A lot of new app developers. A lot of applications coming out for Windows Phone 7. Unfortunately, Pandora has said they don't have any plans for Windows Phone 7, as had the makers of Angry Birds. I think eventually we'll see those. Why they aren't doing it right now, I'm not sure, but I think you'll see a lot of applications. We're already at two to 3,000 and growing strong. Uh, there's new apps all the time on Windows Phone 7 when I check the marketplace. I don't think either one is a bad choice, and especially if you want QWERTY keyboards and things, you have that choice with Windows Phone 7, uh, with the LG versions and some other phones that will be coming out soon. Oh, uh, the Dell Venue Pro is an excellent choice for that, a new portrait slider that's, that's now out or ready for order. So I think that gives you a pretty good idea between the two. I know it's been a lengthy video, uh, but if there's anything I didn't answer, please... Uh, please feel free to ask. I, I'll always try and answer back, as, as you may have seen on other videos. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.